Okay, so we'll continue our discussion where we stopped the previous class. So uh, we we developed a stress diagram from a beta plot. So we have to convert this diagram to this diagram, and uh, so you know that how to convert beta to alpha. Okay, and finally we get OA, OB, OC, OD, and OE uh, in terms of a stress diagram. Okay, this is nothing but our yield locus. and we can mention oa as alpha is equal to 1 and ob as alpha is equal to half and oc as alpha is equal to 0 and od as alpha is equal to minus 1 and this is the last one where alpha is equal to minus infinity we say and then uh, correspondingly there is uh, beta values so now we will see uh, some details about uh, uh, each one so um, here you can see uh, in the equibaxial uh, stretching alpha is equal to beta is equal to 1 that is basically you are uh, Uh, if you see the previous one it is oa ah this is uh, oa oa path so if you look into it uh, since alpha is equal to beta is equal to 1 so we are going to develop some relationships uh, which will be useful for our discussion and uh, you will see that uh, sigma bar is equal to square root of uh, sigma 1 square minus sigma 1 sigma 2 plus sigma 2 square and uh, this is as per one meister seal function and uh, here you will say that if you put alpha is equal to 1 you will see sigma bar is equal to sigma 1 which is nothing but sigma 2 okay so your effective stress is nothing but the principal stresses and uh, when you go to next one that is your o uh you o b so okay this is o b okay so here you will see that beta is equal to 0 and alpha is equal to half right alpha is equal to half here okay so alpha is equal to half so here you will see that uh, um if we put uh, alpha is equal to half here so you will get uh, sigma 1 equals uh, 2 by square root of 3 into sigma bar which is nothing but 1.15 times uh, sigma bar and uh, sigma 2 is equal to half into sigma 1 because alpha is equal to 1 by 2 right so for a given flow stress uh, here uh, you will see sigma 1 is greater in this process than any other we will see that okay here sigma 1 which is principal stresses is uh, 1.15 times uh, your sigma bar 1.15 times a sigma bar okay and uh, if you go to the next one uniaxial tension where beta is equal to minus alpha is equal to 0 if i put alpha is equal to 0 sigma bar is equal to sigma 1 okay and then you will see that uh, your sigma 2 0 sigma 1 will be nothing but sigma bar is nothing but sigma f which is nothing but your flow stress okay so you can see that uh, both are equal here sigma bar Uh, and sigma 1 and sigma f all are equal but here if you see that sigma 1 is 1.15 times uh, sigma bar and this occurs in tensile test if you go to the next one that is drawing where alpha is equal to minus half and beta is equal to minus 1 if you put alpha is equal to minus half here you will get uh, the membrane stresses as sigma 1 is nothing but 0.58 times uh, sigma bar which is just half of sigma bar okay if you go to the previous one okay you will see that uh, your sigma 1 is equal to 1.15 times sigma bar here sigma 1 is equal to equal to sigma bar and here you will say sigma 1 is equal to 0.5 times sigma bar and sigma 2 is equal to minus of 0.58 times sigma bar what does that means that means if you compare this with the previous one the magnitude of stresses to cause deformation are at a minimum in this process okay in drawing okay when you follow a deformation path where alpha is equal to minus 1 beta is equal to minus 1 then you will have a magnitude of stresses which is going to be minimum that is in magnitude they are only 58 percentage that means 0.58 times 58 percentage of stress required to yield a similar element in simple tension so if you go to uniaxial tension okay you are deforming the material and you want to yield it so then you need to go to sigma 1 is equal to sigma f but at the same time same material same element you are going to deform it in drawing then it will be only 58 percentage of that okay so it is going to be a minimum in this process whereas uh, you will see that uh, it's going to be greater in this case in plane strain it is going to be greater why it is because 1.15 times uh, sigma bar so here it is 1.15 times here it is one time and here it is uh, uh, only half of that 0.58 times okay so in uniaxial compression you will see that uh, since sigma 2 sigma 1 is 0 if you substitute here you will get sigma 2 will be equal to uh, on the negative side which will be your minus sigma f and this is going to create a wrinkling on the flange of the sheet and we have seen this example uniaxial compression at the edge of the flange region so you will see that uh, you are going to have wrinkling because of this okay so this uh, five paths oa ob oc okay and then uh, you have od and then you have oe 
okay all are coming from this particular one oa ob oc od oe and uh, you will see that if you are deforming in this particular uh, you know stress path where alpha is equal to minus 1 you can deform the material to reach yielding okay pretty easily and it is about 58 percentage of that what is required in uni axial tension that is what we have shown in this particular comparison in this one and this one okay so just to complete the last section of this particular then we will go for uh, uh, one couple of problems you will see that principal tractions or tension principal traction or tension okay so tension is nothing but force per unit length transmitted in the sheet okay or you can also say it is traction traction means just pulling okay so t1 is nothing but sigma 1 into t and t2 is nothing but sigma into t so sigma 2 by sigma 1 into sigma 1 into t you can say which is nothing but your t2 and uh, you will see that uh, this is going to be your uh, t1 okay so and uh, this is nothing but your alpha so t2 is nothing but alpha into t1 so t2 is nothing but uh, sigma 2 into t or it is nothing but alpha into t1 so sigma 2 by sigma 1 sigma 2 by sigma 1 is nothing but alpha similarly we can say t2 by t1 also as uh, alpha both are one of the same so now you can see that uh, like uh, sigma 1 versus sigma 2 you have a yield locus okay we can also have tension locus t1 versus t2 okay so this can be obtained by from sigma 1 and this can be obtained from sigma 2 okay and uh, you will see that uh, this there is an yield locus okay similarly there will be an one tension locus which is given here okay there will be a tension locus which is given this is similar to what we have seen in yield locus okay so there is something called sigma bar we discussed okay and sigma bar will lead to uh, sigma bar is nothing but effective stress right so effective stress will lead to effective tension which is given by t bar which is nothing but sigma bar into t so you can directly write that as square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square into t2 okay so sigma bar we wrote it as square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square into your uh, sigma 1 right so this will be t1 okay this has to be t1 i think okay what is uh, this one into sigma 1 now so this will be t1 okay so uh, if you know this uh, t bar then you can get uh, this e locus right so uh, we are not going to use it rather we are going to use only the uh, yield locus this will be helpful for us uh, when you evaluate uh, the tensions and uh, now we are going to introduce something which will be useful for our next chapter okay so uh, what is that suppose in this equation t1 is equal to sigma 1 into t okay t1 is equal to sigma 1 into t in this equation okay if you use the material law sigma bar is equal to k epsilon bar power n then what will happen you can say that uh, this sigma 1 is nothing but sigma bar square divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus uh, alpha square isn't it so sigma bar is k epsilon bar power n so this you can combine as 1 and t is nothing but t naught exponential minus a 1 plus beta on epsilon 1 so if you combine this you will get this particular equation so t1 is nothing but sigma 1 into t where sigma 1 is nothing but sigma bar divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square and t is nothing but t naught exponential minus a 1 plus beta on epsilon 1 this we have developed in the previous section itself okay so now you will see that this equation is a function of some material properties and your uh, beta and alpha and uh, your uh, epsilon 1 straight right k and n you know strength coefficient and strain hardening exponent t naught is the initial thickness beta is uh, you know your uh, strain ratio and alpha is the stress ratio and finally the only variable is uh, epsilon 1 and for epsilon 1 you can get uh, epsilon bar also because by knowing beta you can get epsilon 2 epsilon 1 and 2 can be obtained so 3 can be obtained from this you can get epsilon bar finally you will see that uh, t1 as a function of uh, t1 as a function of epsilon 1 and t2 as a function of epsilon 1 can be drawn and uh, here it is given okay so from this we can get t1 and t2 where t1 and t2 are related by t2 is uh, nothing but t1 into alpha okay so from this equation you can fetch any uh, values for this and you can get t1 versus t2 here t1 okay or t2 versus epsilon 1 you will get so uh, and you will see that for those cases when you have beta greater than minus 1 beta greater than minus 1 means that means this fellows beta greater than minus 1 means this side okay so for those cases where you have thinning for those cases where you have thinning you will get maximum load 
okay you will get the maximum load and after that you will see that maximum load is going to decrease or tension is going to decrease okay so t1 is obtained and t2 can be obtained by knowing alpha right so if you want to find this maximum uh, tension okay so then uh, you can get it uh, by uh, taking dt1 by d epsilon 1 as 0 and uh, if you solve it you will get epsilon 1 star will be equal to n by 1 plus beta and this value will be this one from 0 to this okay so you can solve it and find out okay or you can do it graphically also but you can choose k n t naught uh, beta epsilon uh, alpha you can choose and uh, if you change epsilon 1 as a variable you will get t1 and t2 in this way and only for beta greater than minus 1 you will get such situation this kind of situation if it is less than minus 1 then it will never come down okay because uh, beta is not going to be you know uh, greater than minus 1 then thinning will not happen okay then you will not see this maximum tension okay so only if you have beta greater than minus 1 you will get this particular situation and the maximum tension can be obtained when you have epsilon 1 star we are going to call this as star because it is going to tell the maximum value epsilon 1 star is equal to n by 1 plus beta where n is your strain hardening exponent and b is your strain ratio beta is your strain ratio okay so uh, if you know epsilon 1 star you can get epsilon 2 star as 2 star sorry 2 star as beta into epsilon 1 star considering a proportional process uh, the beta is not going to change let us say so now for uniaxial tension suppose beta is equal to minus half okay beta is equal to minus half if you put epsilon 1 star is equal to 2n and for plane strain if beta is equal to 0 you will get epsilon 1 star is equal to n what does that mean that means if you deform a material in uniaxial tension okay so the material is going to fail at a strain of two times of strain hardening exponent at the same time if you deform the material same material when you have plane strain process epsilon 1 star will be equal to n okay so what does it mean that means the material can extend to a larger value of you know epsilon 1 when you deform the material in uniaxial tension as compared to plane strain so in plane strain the material can fail a material can reach this maximum value which is a, a indication of something like instability okay then that will be reached early in plane strain process okay at epsilon 1 star is equal to n so if n is equal to let us say 0 0.22 so epsilon 1 star will be equal to uh, you are uh, 0 0.22 into 2 that is 0 0.44 in case of uniaxial but at the same time it is plane strain means it is 0 0.22 only okay so in that case uh, uh, the material is going to reach failure or instability in plane strain much early as compared to uniaxial okay this is going to lead to a good uh, next chapter uh, some theories we are going to develop for instability this will be a basis for this so where once this star indicates that the material will be an some sort of instability or a maximum load is reached maximum tension is reached okay so we will stop this theory part with this we will solve two problems in this now okay which are uh, going to be useful for us okay so first problem is okay a small circle of 5 mm diameter is printed on the surface of undeformed low carbon steel sheet with thickness of 0.8 mm so t naught is nothing but 0 0.8 mm so we will take t naught as 0.8 mm and uh, initial diameter of the circle let us say d naught as 5 mm let us pick up this way and it is a plane stress proportional process and it is a plane stress proportional process so uh, after deformation the major dimensions are given minor dimensions are given what are they basically it is uh, let us say d major as uh, you can call it as 6.1 mm and uh, d uh, minor as 4.8 mm okay and effective stress strain relationship is a standard one so we need to get alpha here and then t1 and t2 and then you can get effective strain so as we discussed in the previous uh, chapter so now the point here is uh, once the dimensions are given we have to get the principal strains right so epsilon 1 is you can directly get ln of 6.1 divided by 5 okay that will be about 0 0.199 and then epsilon 2 can be obtained ln of 4.8 divided by 5 which is going to be negative value if you know these two you can get epsilon 3 as minus of epsilon 1 plus 2 which will be this okay so now uh, we need to get alpha so for that we need to get beta because strains are known from beta you can get alpha so what is beta epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 so uh, 0 0.041 minus 0 0.041 divided by 0 0.199 it will be minus 0 0.21 and from here you can get alpha as 0 
okay so alpha has been found out so now alpha has been found out this fine then we need to get the effective strain so that is also another question so it is understood that it is one mises equation so square root of 4 by 3 into 1 plus beta plus beta square into epsilon 1 so you substitute beta this particular beta value here you will get epsilon bar as 0 0.21 and the tensions t1 and t2 can be obtained you just now derived it okay t1 and t2 we just now derived isn't it so t1 is this if you know t1 t2 can be obtained by alpha into t1 so t1 is nothing but this value k epsilon bar power n divided by 1 minus alpha plus alpha square into t naught exponential of minus 1 plus beta into epsilon 1. So, all values are known to us. So, this is your uh, k right and this is your n. So, all are given. So, 600 into 0 0.21 power 0 0.22 divided by square root of 1 minus alpha 0 0.324 plus 0 0.324 square into t naught is 0.8 exponential minus of 1. Then beta is nothing but uh, where is beta? minus 0 0.21 into 0 0.199. If you calculate T1, it is going to be 329.3, about 329 kilo Newton per meter. Okay? So, you have to check the units. Please check the units. It has to be consistently used. Please check it. And T2, you can obtain by alpha into T1. What is alpha? It is already known to us, 0 0.324 into T1. It will be just one third of this. So, this will be your uh, 0 0.106.7 kilo Newton per meter. Okay. So, this is one easy problem. Okay. So, th these all are known to us from the previous chapter. Epsilon, how to get epsilon 1, 2, 3, beta and then alpha, epsilon bar, we already done. Only difference is now we calculated, uh, we derived an equation for T1 and we derived an equation for T2 and T1 and T2 are nothing but major tension, minor tension. Okay. So, that is the only extension in this chapter and you know how to get it. Similar problem. Okay. So, suppose you are doing deep drawing. Okay, so this deep drawing, cup deep drawing, you know, the strains in the center of the base A. So this point is, let us say A, halfway up the cup wall. This is your cup wall B. Okay, and in the middle of the flange, that is in C. Okay, these three values are given as 0 0.015, 0 0.015, 0 0.050, 0 0.15 minus 0 0.1. These all values are given. Okay, this is nothing but strains. That is epsilon one versus epsilon two. Okay, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are given for these three locations A, B and C. This A is here, B is somewhere in the middle and C is somewhere in the middle here. Okay. The strain hardening of the material is negligible so that effective stress is constant. Okay. So, here they are saying sigma bar as a constant value. Constant value means what? Okay. There is no hardening in the material. So, which means that your flow stress is going to remain constant at 300 mega Pascal which is easy for us to calculate. Initial thickness is given as 0.5. So, T naught is given. Okay, so, what you need to get is basically at each point, this A, B, C, you have to get the new thickness and major tension that is T1. New thickness T and major tension T1. That is all you need to get. So, so now how do we go ahead? So, like now strains are given. So, directly uh, we start getting one by one. What is the requirement we have? So, you need to get T. That is a new thickness, right? So, new thickness depends on the original thickness by T is equal to T naught exponential epsilon 3, correct? So, now here you need to get uh, epsilon 3 because T naught is known to you. T naught is already given. Okay, Epsilon 3 has to be found out. So, epsilon 3 is nothing but minus of 1 plus beta into epsilon 1, right? So, for this beta should be known. For this epsilon 1 also should be known which is already given for each points. So, how do you get beta now? Beta is nothing but 0 0.015 divided by this 0 0.015, then 0 divided by 0 0.05 which is 0 minus 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.15 which is minus 0 0.667. If you put beta is equal to 1, 0, minus 0 0.667, in this you can get alpha. You know that for a beta is equal to 1, alpha is equal to 1. For 0, it is half. This is known. Okay, this is balanced by axial stretching and this is plane strain. Okay, so, uh, and here, this is going to be a variable. Okay, it is 0 0.251. Okay, so, it is a plane strain. Plane strain is a half is not it. So, plane strain is uh, half. We said plane strain is uh, 0, beta 0 and alpha is half. Beta 0 and alpha is half. Ah, beta 0, alpha is half. That has been obtained. So, now everything is known. Okay. So, all the values are known here. Epsilon 1 is uh, already uh, uh, given in the uh, value 0 0.015. So, minus of 1 plus beta is 1. You substitute everything here. You will get this value, this value and this value for the different parts. 
A location, B location and C location. Right. So, now our question is there is only one variable that is epsilon 3 here that you can substitute in this. You will get a new thickness 0 0.485, 0 0.456, 0 0.456, right, 476. So, there is a less decrement in balance by axial. You will see more uh, uh, change in thickness in case of uh, these two. Now, uh, you want to get T1. What do you need to do? Your T1 is nothing but sigma 1 into T. So, T has been found out already, you need to get sigma 1. Sigma 1 is nothing but sigma bar divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square. Ah, that can be found out, right. So, sigma bar is nothing but already given, 300 mega Pascal. You have to just substitute as it is because it is not going to be a variable. Divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square, you can substitute alpha value and you will get 300, 346 and 262, right. So, you can see that uh, sigma bar and sigma 1 are equal, is not it, for balanced by axial stretching, you know. So, that is what we have seen in the previous one, you know, you, see, you can see that uh, sigma sigma 1, sigma bar are equal, is not it. So, that is what we got here in this problem as well. So, which means it is good, okay. So, then uh, if sigma 1 is known to you, uh, sigma 1 into T will give you T1, that is major tension, T is already known, okay, this is about half of each. 300 into 0 0.485, 342 into 0 0.476, 262 into 0 0.476, you will get these three values, okay. So, now uh, by knowing, uh, you know, T1 and T2, you can get uh, not only the uh, tensions corresponding to the principal stresses, but also at which stage of deformation you will get uh, maximum tension, which is equivalent to some instability that is going to start. Now, that can be obtained when you put epsilon 1 star is equal to your uh, n by 1 plus beta, right. So, uh, basically in this chapter, we are discussing about how to find your uh, strains at different locations of the sheet and then uh, some concept called strain signature we introduced, that is through strain diagram. Then we introduced uh, how, to, how to interpret strain diagram, some important uh, features we understood, then how to convert that into stress diagram and then some important features of this five different uh, alphas and betas we understood. And at the end, we introduced uh, major tension, minor tension, how to get T1 and T2 from sigma 1, sigma 2 has been found out and some problems we solved just now, two problems, two examples, okay. So, this uh, a small circle means uh, it is given in one location, right. Similarly, you can imagine a sheet of 200 mm by 200 mm dimension. In all that location, you have so many such circles, okay. And uh, in each circle, you will have so many, uh, you know, uh, variables inside. Each location will have epsilon 1, 2, 1, 3 will be varying. Each location will have its own beta alpha, then epsilon bar will come and tension T1 and T2 will change accordingly, okay. And this example is the best one to represent that. So, different locations A, B and C, you will see that uh, A is deforming in this fashion, B is deforming in this fashion and C is deforming in this fashion, okay. And uh, your alpha, beta, thickness, strain, sigma 1, sigma 2, everything is going to change as per the location and strains that we get. So, we stop here. So, in the next class, we will start the uh, new chapter. Mm -hmm.